Hi everybody, I'm Maddie Simmons and this is Comedy Happens and we have a very, very special guest with us. But before that, I want to tell you one of the oldest jokes I know. This joke, I, I think I was in a crib when I first heard this joke, but I love it. Guy comes to America, speaks very little English, lives with his uncle. His uncle gives him a piece of paper. It says, Sterling Place. He says, you get on the subway, you go, you keep, at each stop you read the signs, when it says Sterling Place, you get off right next to the subway. There's a building. You go in there and you ask for George. You know what to do? Yes. He gets on the subway. Train goes about two or three stops. No Sterling Place. He starts to worry. He goes across the way and he asks the lady, does this train go to Sterling Place? She says, yes, of course. He sits down. Thank you. Train goes two or three more stops. He starts to worry again. He gets up, he goes to the end of the car. He says to a guy, does this train go to Sterling Place? He says, yes, it does. He sits down. Now, five stops later, he's still really worried. He gets up and he goes into the next car and he says to the first person he sees, does this train go to Sterling Place? The guy says, it does. He sits down. The train goes two more stops. Another guy walks into the train, into the subway, walks over to him and says, Pardon me, sir, but does this train go to Sterling Place? The guy says, now you got me worried again. And we'll be right back with Cato Kalen. Hi, everybody. We're back. And we're back with a good friend of mine, a guy who is best known, perhaps, for being in the wrong place at the wrong time but he was world famous for it because the wrong place was the most famous murder case in the history of America. And this is my friend, Cato Kalin. I like Cato. Oh, I like Cato. No. I like Cato. Down boy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Down boy. I'm about, I'm Cato. About <laughs> most people know of you because of the... Oh, completely. The, I, the OJ case. Yeah. But I, I, many of us have listen to you on the air, uh, millions have listened to you on the air, and many of us have b I've been on the air with you. Yeah. And I know that you're not just a guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but you're a very funny entertainer. Well, hearing that from you matters and more than anything me, else. I, from I, I don't the dangle great. it loosely. I, I think what? <laughs> Milton Berle does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, not anymore. Oh, okay. what, what, uh, <laughs> Tell me, bring me up to date. What, oh, are you, what are you doing these days? Well, you know, obviously people always ask me where I'm living now. It's one of the biggest things I say. And I say, thank goodness I don't live with OJ anymore. So the last few years I've been living behind Bill Cosby's. But seriously, Maddie, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but seriously, don't get too He says, yeah, it's, no longer, it's no longer Jell-O, it's J-Lo. <laughs> no, I, it's, you, I, I got one more. Movie, you made a movie. Yes, well, I made quite a few, uh, but I, uh, the latest one was with, mean, the, when the Coppola family. Uh, I did one with Christopher Coppola, and Christopher is this brilliant, brilliant, insane in a good way director. And I play a, uh, it's called Sacred Blood, and it's a serious role where I play a, uh, if you ever saw a Taxi Driver, the Harvey Keitel role is sort of like where right. I got the inspiration from. The, they dyed my hair black, very long, with a hat, and wow. I, uh, I ran a, uh, a little brothel in San Francisco in, in the film. Kaylin and Keitel, I, I, what a combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kaylin, Keitel, I love, I love it. And Coppola. We could sell our own wines. Yeah. So that, that won the uh, San Francisco Film Award, which and is a very great. big, uh, uh, for, to be in that, uh, first of all, show, uh, festival, and it was the number one film. And I know you're on the internet and on television all the time. Yeah, well, I, you know what I'm doing, Maddie, is I, I do this thing, it's, it's changed my life completely. I'm the MC of a, something that's called Wizard World Comic Con. It's the world's largest traveling Comic Con show. So I'm with the actors from Marvel uh, uh, Comics, all the movies, the Avengers, from, from the, the Robert Downey's uh, to the DC Comics with the Justice League, with Every Girl Loves Jason Comic Momoa, Aquaman. A phenomenon. It's we're not the San Diego, but we are the largest traveling show. We just got right. the rights to Asia, and as soon as I go to Asia, I said to all my friends, if I go to Asia, I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'll get married. I, I'm all about dating Asian women. That's all. Uh, I'm crazy, I know. 
Are you I, are you personally, are you dating yeah, these days? Yeah, I, I actually am dating these days. And last week I had a threesome, but I had two no-shows. But seriously, <laughs> Maddie, what kind of show is this? Uh, it's bad when you have to sleep with someone you have to inflate. I love your show. Comedy <laughs> does happen. It's bad when you inflate the doll and the inflatable husband walks in. I love your show. <laughs> I see that you relax these days. Yeah, didn't you? yeah so I am da I'm dating a, a, a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful woman from Beijing, and I'm learning Mandarin uh, while well, she's learning English. So <laughs> it's, it's going really, really well. And you have one from column A and one from column B. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. So uh, relationship-wise, it's, uh, like I said, things are going pretty, pretty good. And it keeps me busy. And I travel a lot. So I, I'm on week on, week off. And... Um, she doesn't have a, a lot of the friends because she just moved here six months ago. So I said, just wash my place, water the plants, and uh, that's about it. The plant's already dead. She's I'm, not doesn't understand anything. I know you're going. To, you're on the Bill, Bill Maher show. I've seen you on that. Yeah, yeah. Bill's one of the. Is, first of all, the real time of Bill Maher is my my favorite show. He's one of my favorite. He's actually, I think, top three stand-ups. He's just so oh, polished. Oh, the other two. He's. Uh, I would. I like Jerry Seinfeld, and I, I've been really, really, really liking Daniel Tosh. I don't know if you know Daniel Tosh, but I did Tosh.0, oh, the show, so uh -huh. I started watching his stand-up act, and I, I love him. There's so many, so much talented comedians out there, and I do a lot of the emceeing. I get a lot of these shows where I, I, I tell them when they book me, I go, I'm not, I'm not a stand-up, but I really love talking and riffing with the audience, it's, but it goes really, it's what I do but for my do show. you riff. And I uh -huh. riff, and it, it goes, it, it's wonderful. I was on a show you did uh, on the internet, and uh, no, it was on TV. Actually, you broke Dish me Network. down. I mean, yes. it was just you were alert. Tailgating with Cato, I, I did that. You yes. know, we did a lot of talk. You and I, you were a huge, still a Mets fan, right? Oh, I love. God, I forever. love baseball. Well, I, I, I was a Brooklyn Dodger, born in Brooklyn, and a Dodger fan. And then when they left, I hated the Dodgers. Oh my gosh! And you're Larry King. Same fan. thing. Larry King, Brooklyn. You love the Brooklyn Dodgers. All Brooklyn-born people hate the Dodgers. Yeah, and I'm a Milwaukee fan. You know the whole Ryan Braun thing. Oh, after yeah. MVPs, they did steroids and all that. I think the steroids were getting so bad that that Avin and Costello actually said, "Who's on what?" But <laughs> love your show. I love it. Which camera do I look at for my joke? I love this show. <laughs> Kato one, Kato two, Kato three. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I had a menage a trois, I actually had to blow up the trois. One, two, three. Comedy happens. Not now, but it'll happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you do to, that makes you so quiet and relaxed? <laughs> do you know what's it's really funny? I'm an I'm old guy. I really am in a, a much older, I think, than what people think, which I won't get into. 30, 35, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I, what I, I've done for over 30 33 or so years, I didn't become this trend thing of people juicing, not, not steroid, but actually juicing the kales and everything else. I've done this for over 35 years where I've had the juice machine. I do it religiously every day, and if I'm on the road, I take it a three-day supply. And it's, I know I don't want to bore you with the comedy happens, but it's uh, kale. I put a habanero, ginger root, and then I put in cucumber, and I do the uh, apple, orange, but I do All it pretty much every day. All the things that I wouldn't touch. Yes, but I juice it, and it, I'm... <laughs> Like, this is, uh, whatever, we're taping right now, it's almost midnight. It's the only thing I've had since this morning. But it I hear you have a line going. of clothing that I would touch. I, I do have a line of clothing called Slacker. And yeah, that's uh, people, me. Yes, well, people <laughs> associate me with being a Slacker during the days of the trial. But I'm anything but. I'm always hustling. And the greatest thing about my pants, uh, Slacker, it's inactive wear. Um, it's not active wear. So the inactive wear, all the guys' pants come with this pocket that has a TV remote. It says TV remote goes here, so you never lose your TV remote when you're on the couch. <laughs> it's it's uh, Oreos, Cheetos, Fritos, anything that ends in O, you should be wearing Kato's. Slacker wear. So slackerwear.com. It's, mm. it's, it's, uh, gosh, there's just so much that is going on, and I'm, this traveling, though, and being in front of an audience, uh, I do like eight or nine hours for the four days that I'm in those cities. And every city I go to, I do the radio, I do the TV. And so it's just, it's just sort of branding me. You remember the, the artist named Jewel? She used yeah. to sell CDs out of her van. So I feel like I'm just trying to win every city you sell someone slacks over. out of your van. Oh, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, sell, I sell myself. And it's just changed my life as far as every city. Because a lot of the millennials don't know me, but their parents do. But since they've had all the uh, ESPN did the, uh, the OJ uh, Oscar winning documentary, FX did a series on the OJ trial. Yeah. So all those things, you know, happen and it 
it brought me back in the picture, and people are were saying, "That's the same Cato." So that's Cato, yeah, that's Cato. But uh, I'm being warned that if I don't take us to a quick break, I'll, I'm I'm out of work. We don't need no stinking break. <laughs> For goodness' sake, you're medicine. No, yes, we do. Let's take a break. with Cato Kalin. Cato, tell me about the shows you're doing. Well, I, I mentioned one of the shows I do is this uh, Wizard World, and off Wizard World now, uh, since I interview... Where, where can this be heard? Seen. Oh, this is a live show. I travel all over the country. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah and it's like I said, we got the rights right. to Asia. Yes. And um, the, the funny thing about this is we have the stars already there. We have, uh, uh, you know, Lou Ferrigno is the Hulk, and we're developing a game show. And since I've been a little kid, I kept saying when my, my parents, I said, Boy, I want to be a game show host. I used to watch all the game shows because they always make people happy by giving them these gifts. And I said, what a great job to give away, to make people happy. And it's been in my, my it's kind of my mantra is always to make that's people happy. That's because you're from Milwaukee. Well, yeah, I, I think that's part of it too. And so I would just, I, we didn't have the, the ability to DVR shows, so I had to make sure I could catch certain shows. And uh, uh, being... Now that the uh, company I work for, Wizard World, were developing a game show, and they said, you're the perfect ho host for this. And during the show, when I interview with the, uh, the uh, uh, we have an entertainment stage, I close every show with something called Katoroki. It's like karaoke, but it's with me as the host, we call it Katoroki, where I get some of the stars that are doing the show to come Michael. up on my stage and sing. Uh, Thomas E. Nicholas, if you saw the American Pie films, I think you know, I think he worked with you. Uh, we get the cast of Charmed. We've had Jason Momoa from Justice League. Uh, um, the actors that are there, Lou Ferrigno coming on stage. So oh it's, my just God, so, Lou it's just so the much fun. The bodybuilder. The bodybuilder and the Hulk. So people go crazy when they see these people, and then I have them do Katoroki, and a lot of them can't sing, for instance, me. And so that's just <laughs> part of it. So the actual experience of people come to the show, they buy packages to get an autograph from the celebrities around, and I'm on the stage with the best of that city's. We have a booker getting the best of uh, uh, magicians. Uh, jugglers, so it's constant entertainment going on, dancers, and uh, I'm just really humbled that I'm the host of this and I get to meet so many wonderful people. And, uh, what funny things happen? Oh, funny things happen all the time. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story because we talk about TV shows that I've done, and I swear, I've done The View. You've heard the show called The View. Sure. So I've done The View at least five times. So the last time I did The View, I was sitting be between uh, Joy Bahar and uh, 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 Whoopi Goldberg. And, and the uh, whoever was there, and I, I'm telling the truth. I know it wasn't me, but someone passed gas so bad that it was live TV, and I was looking around because I knew it wasn't me, and I said, "Does not am I the only one that smells this?" And so after the show, I, I confronted one of the uh, of the hosts and said, "Did you?" And she said, "No," and she blamed it on the other person. <laughs> but I can tell you, someone, someone, oh Maddie, someone passed. Hey, Maddie, what did you just do? No, but seriously, we no. just, it was, hey, what kind of show is this? Uh, but it, it's true. Uh, well, I, I, this will probably get censored, but it reminds me of uh, an old friend of mine who passed away some years ago, Hal Cantor, who was like the dean of American uh, sure. humorous. And uh, he was at a table, we were at a table, and a guy came in and said, you're not going to believe what happened to me last night. I was at a party, and a guy, I was talking to some guys, and another guy came over we didn't know, and the guy stood there and passed gas. Now, who would do a thing like that? And Cantor said, some asshole. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Only a wit like Cal oh, Cantor yeah. would come so, up with it. And, and so when I was growing up in uh, Wisconsin, it's a dairy land, and uh, my dad, I just remember, uh, would go out and would buy horses sometimes. And my dad, I, when I was just a little boy, I watched my dad, he'd have to rub the horse a certain way and check out its legs and rub the, the rump of the horse and check it. I would always as a kid go, Dad, why do, you, why do you do that? And he said an important lesson, son, is that you have to make sure when you buy something that it's in great shape. And I start crying and my dad's going, why are you crying? I said, Dad, I think the mailman wants to buy mommy. <laughs> I love this show! That's a story I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I want to buy mommy. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, I just have so many great memories, uh, Maddie, and, and you're part of the memories of growing up of, of um, one of the, 
first of all, it's amazing that I became a friend of yours because it, when I was a, a great high school senior or a first year of college, I, was, I came back for a Christmas break and I'll never forget, there was a, a, a place in Milwaukee called the Northridge Mall where everybody hung out. And there was a line that went from the beginning of the movie theater to the end. It was the longest line I've ever seen for a film. And, and my I'll brothers my waited. Rent. Yeah, <laughs> and that film was Animal House, and it sort of changed my life with comedy. I laughed from beginning to end with my brothers. Uh, you know, because when you go away to college, you don't see everybody. And when you have that, that is one of the memories I'll never forget. Uh, and, and now I'm talking with you, and then you for no, it. but it's that. And if you remember, I talk at Book Soup. You asked me to introduce you, and I'll never forget that either. Uh, you had Billy Bob Thornton there. You had the cast of Animal House. Yeah, and Billy Bob said I was a guest on this show recently, and he told me that growing up, he and his brother would totally read every line in the Lampoon, the yeah. National Lampoon, and that's why he decided. If these guys can be fun, can do it, I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to try to make it there. Yeah, and well, it, it inspired him. And he's another baseball fanatic. He's St. Louis Cardinals. And yeah, I can't stand the Cardinals. But yeah, I, I, at, at Book Soup, when you did the uh, uh, Fat Drunk and Stupid, that's a bookstore, uh, folks. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I, I like pictures. Not a soup store. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's uh, that's a memory that I'll never forget. And I always uh, Thank you. when I when I worked at Lampoon, I, I was just having you in the same building. And uh, I'm not oh trying to make God. your ego Please blow up, stop but seriously. It. NASA, we're doing we're an orbit around cry. Maddie's head. His head is blowing up. NASA, we're in our third orbit around Maddie's head. Can I go to break with you? You take the break. Hey, everybody. Comedy happens. Take a break. Maddie, take a break. Maddie Simmons. <laughs> Oh, we're back with my friend Cato Kalin, the quiet, retired Cato Kalin. <laughs> I love Cato. Yeah, you love Cato. I love Cato, too. So, listen, you know, I, I got to admit something to you. I, I am, uh, social media-wise, I'm um, perhaps one of the most ignorant people in the world. No. Uh, uh, thank God I have daughters, and, and my late wife was totally in with that, and they all handle all that. I must name. be following the wrong Maddie but Simmons then I on hear Twitter. You, I'm sorry? I must be following the wrong Maddie Simmons on Twitter. <laughs> I, don't follow oh my me on goodness, I, I, the whole time I, I, I thought this guy I, I giving compliments twit. was you. I don't twit. Uh, but, yeah. Well, the twit's going to hit the I, fan I, yeah, But soon. you do. <laughs> I do. I, tell, I, tell us about it. I do. I, I love the, uh, uh, the platform I, I, I do because I can test out any kind of joke. Um, I, I, Compare Twitter as the mean Cato, because that's my passion of sports, and I tweet really mean stuff, but it's become very popular with uh, uh, TV shows and very popular with uh, sports people. And then on my Instagram, it's friendly, fun Cato. Oh my gosh, this guy is probably never upset. Well, I do these little bits because I travel so much in the airport where I film people getting from gate to gate, and I take my camera without them really knowing, and I start it off as a horse race, and then I do it as a, and that's coming off the gate, it's Lady with the Samsonite, man holding pizza box, and in the back, it's bad t-shirt, bad t-shirt, takes over the front, and then the people start looking at me, and, it, 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 and so uh, a, a few oh, shows wanted to have me doing bits for their shows. I wish you had somebody filming that, that would be filming you doing that. that oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's crazy with that sort of thing, and then I film obviously my, uh, uh, when I'm on stage with the, the Wizard World stuff, and uh, it's amazing how little things can catch on and it becomes a hit, and that's how you get these that's people great. called influencers. Uh, that's a little thing that is great. Yeah, I think that's a lot great. of people, the younger Let, I gotta ask you a bunch of questions. Okay, <laughs> well we do this every show. And, <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, and, yeah, you're ready? Yeah. Okay, what's your favorite TV comedy show? TV comedy show now. I, I mentioned Tosh.0. Oh, I yeah, laugh you're at that show. not doing now. It could be in any time. Oh, any time. Well, I think Tosh.0 oh, now, uh, but I think the most important thing was watching whatever made my family laugh, and especially my dad and my mom. Like I what? saw them laugh. Uh, I'll Johnny Carson show. I had, I had to watch Johnny Carson do his Karnak. I laughed at that. Uh, they laughed a lot at all the Norman Lear, the uh, All in the Families, the whole change. And I just remember Fridays with the Odd Couple. John what about movies? Tony. Uh, movies, there's quite a movie few movies. Movie comedies. Movie comedies. I really like the way that uh, I, now I really did a lot of research on 
comedy because I loved it so much. In high school, I was known as the Bob Hope of Nicolay. And Oprah <laughs> went there, and Steve Miller, and uh, Howie Epstein from the Tom Petty Band, and Richard Lovett, uh, the president of CAA, all went to my high school. So I was the Bob Hope of that school. So Hope and Crosby, I saw the change happen with Carrie from Dumb and Dumber, how they made that sort of like the new buddy film. Yeah. I saw the change happening, how they, where you could push the envelope. And then something about Mary lapped. It's certain films that I love bits and I re remember what was like the, what really made people laugh. So na name, name your favorite movie comedy of all time. I, I would have to go Dumb and Dumber right now because I was really? up for the part. I was up for the part of Dumb and Dumber, the Harry part of uh, Jeff Daniels, I, and I actually I screen tested, and that was the week before the uh, uh, murders happened, and then my life stopped. Oh my so God. Rick Montgomery was casting that, and I'll never forget uh. it, because Aaron Myerson was the producer on it. He gave me the script three months before it even happened, and said, Cato, you gotta read this, because Aaron knew me, people knew me before the trial. And I tell people that, uh, of who I am, and, uh, and a writer from Esquire said, this is Cato Kalin. He was born of tragedy, but behold the life force that he is. What a great line. And that's, what, uh, that's what I, my life is that. I'm uh, in my 16th minute, forget the 15th. And minutes. who's your favorite comedy actor? Uh, comedy actor? Uh, it, that changes with every film that comes out. I mean, at one point it was Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray I loved. A Lampoon and I would go and, graduate. Yeah, a Lampoon graduate, graduate. I do Bill's golf tournament too, with the Murray brothers. And I am, I'm very dear friends with the Murrays in this Caddyshack restaurant. Um, boy, my name dropping. I'm a big shot. I'm a big shot. I'm a big shot. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, I love Ben Stiller. I think he's great. Uh, very subtle with comedy. And uh, one of the TV shows I didn't mention that I absolutely two that I really forgot that I wanted to mention right. was the old SCTVs with Eugene Levy. Oh and I love Joe Flaherty, but I also loved uh, uh, um, uh, Get a Life with Chris Elliott. John Candy. John Candy, of course. Uh, vacation. John Candy. And Catherine O'Hara. Catherine, all of them. Um, Andrea Martin. Um, yeah. All those. And then the people don't, I think a lot of people, the younger people, don't realize that all these great actors that are in these movies were from that group, well, including Rick people, Moranis, Dave he Thomas. They graduated to the Lampoon. Great, all Lampoon. Harold Ramis. Yeah. Harold Ramis. Uh -huh. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's, I, in, in college, I did a paper on SCTV. It was the only time I got an A on any paper I wrote. <laughs> and it's because when you have a passion, yeah, you excel you at love it, it you and, it, you, yeah. and then it's it's like when I work my job, it's not work to me. It's the most fun I've ever had in my life, and I get a paycheck for it. You remember your favorite joke of all time? Uh, my favorite joke of all time? There's a few of them, but one of them was my dad would say is like, if uh, anybody got sick in the family and had diarrhea, he said it would, you know, it's hereditary. It runs in our genes. <laughs> Oh my God. A lot of toilet humor here. Oh, but you know why, good. Maddie? Because it's our show. <laughs> it's our show. A three camera setup. On that cookie note, jar. No cookie for you. As, as, as the uh, ambulance pulls up to the studio. Yes, the Ghostbuster <laughs> ambulance. And the guys with the handcuffs come running out. <laughs> we say to you, adieu, and to Cato Kalin. Adieu, adieu, adieu. No, adieu, you don't. Adieu. <laughs> hey, it's me, I'm Cato Kalin, and you are watching <laughs> Comedy Happens. <laughs>